My name is Zephyr and I am a H-60 helicopter pilot and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how jet engines work and then we're going to take you over to the shops where the engines are disassembled and inspected and tested and then we're going to show you what the engines look like when they're mounted back on the helicopter so that Coast Guard airplanes and helicopters can go off and do amazing things. All jet engines, which are also called gas turbines, work on the same principle. The engine sucks air in at the front with a fan. A compressor section, seen in blue, raises the pressure of the air. The compressor is made with many blades attached to a shaft. The blades spin at high speed and compress or squeeze the air. The compressed air is then sprayed with fuel and an electric spark lights the mixture in the combustion section. The burning gases expand and blast out through the back of the engine. As the jets of gas shoot backward through the turbine section, they turn a power turbine, which is attached to a gearbox, which turns a propeller for an airplane or the main rotor blades for a helicopter. As the hot air exits the engine, it passes through a second turbine attached to the same shaft as the compressor. Spinning this turbine causes the compressor to spin and the cycle to begin again. Hello, my name is Johnny Eubanks. I work here at the Aviation Testing and Engine Repair Facility here in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. This right here is a T-700 engine, which is used in the H-60 aircraft for the Coast Guard. The engine is built in different modules. We have a coal section module right here, a accessory gearbox module right here. Inside the aft end of the coal section would be your hot section, and then from here back is your power turbine. The first thing we do when we see the engines is we'll inspect them. This is one of the compressor sections that that is bad. It is located right inside of here. What we do is we check for defects. As you can see right here, we have many of them here. Just probably took a bunch of rocks and stuff. And if it's repairable, we will go ahead and blend them out and reinstall. If not, then we'll replace this. Hello, my name is Bobby. This is our MDI shop. This is where we inspect all of our aircraft components. Uh, for cracks, corrosion, this is our pension tank, our emulsifier, we pretty much dip the part, let it sit, emulsify it, develop it, and that'll tell us if there's any cracks, we'll be able to take it into our inspection booth under black light and be able to see the defects pop out to the surface. Over here on this side is our mag particle bench. We'll take a walk down to this side of the shop. And this is for all of our ferrous iron components that we hit with a very powerful electrical current and it'll show us all of the defects. This is a ketos ring and it has defects inside of it that can't be seen with the naked eye. You can see the defects starting to pop out to the top. Each one is closer and farther to the surface as it goes around the ketos ring. And this part's gonna hold the magnification so you'll be able to see all the subsurface defects into the iron component. You can see each little line running down the part. And that would represent a crack in a part underneath the surface. Hi, again, my name is Zephyr. I'm a helicopter pilot here at ALC, and I'm gonna do a brief review about how jet engines work. As we learned in the first video, all jet engines, which are also called gas turbines, work on the same principle. The engine sucks air in at the front and raises the pressure of the air in the compressor section, seen in blue. Then the air is mixed with fuel and electric spark ignites the mixture of, in the combustion section, seen in red. The burning gases expand and blast out the back of the engine, turning a turbine which powers a propeller for an airplane or the main rotor blades for a helicopter. First thing we do is we'll inspect them and then the work leader would make the determination what needs to be repaired on the engine before you just take it down to the test cell, test it, and if the test good, we send it out to the fleet. This is where they test the engine to make sure that it's fully operational before they install it back on the aircraft. Here you can see the engine attached to the testing bench which allows the engine to turn at various power settings to make sure that the engine is fully operational before it's put back on the aircraft. 
Hello, this is the engine test cell console, and from here we can control the engine parameters all the way up to maximum power. Here we monitor uh, all the engine systems and facility systems, and over here we can control all the functions. And what are you testing today? Today we're testing a CT7, which is off the uh, CASA airframe. Hi, my name is Levi Berg and I'm an aviation maintenance technician. And since you guys just got to see the engine at the test cell, I'm going to show you what it looks like when we put it on the aircraft. So as you can see, this is a lot different from what you saw on the test stand. And it takes eight tools to put this on the aircraft. It was designed to be simple like that. So after the installation of the engine, we're gonna take this outside with the pilot and air crew and test the operation of the engine. Thanks for joining us today at the Aviation Logistics Center and look forward to any questions you may have.